Well, we want to welcome you back to another session of our video devotions. And if you've been following with us over the past few weeks, we have worked our way through a section of Scripture in Galatians chapter 5. And Paul talked about the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, today we're beginning a brand new series, uh, a series in the book of Romans. We're going to be taking a look at the Scriptures in detail. And one of the things we discovered as we look through the book of Romans is really there's no way that we can cover one entire chapter and do it justice in a five minute video. There's just no way. And so our prayer is that this would just begin, just be an appetizer for what you would do on your own, that you would go deeper in the Word of God, that you would take time to read the chapter in its entirety. And then use the discussion questions that we have uh, given to you that they might prompt a, a deeper discussion um, in your home, uh, in your life, as you begin to dive into the scriptures as well. We're going to provide those probing questions that are going to maybe uh, take you deeper than you've been before, uh, maybe make you think about the scripture in a different way. And we pray that God would use that to shape you and to shape us into the people that he wants us to be. So we're starting the book of Romans, and we're in chapter 1 this morning and today. And as we read through that, we see a couple of different things that are going to take place. But before we get into the text, I want to talk a little bit about the writing of this. Now, Paul is a writer of this. Paul was used by God to lead many churches, to plant many churches, to write much of the New Testament as we have it. Paul, in this letter to the Romans, addresses an issue that he wanted to go and visit the church at Rome. He had never been there. He had heard about their faith. He had heard about their excitement. In verse 10, we see that Paul says, In my prayers at all times, I pray that it now at last, I, by God's will, uh, God will make the way open for me to come to you. And so all along, God had, or Paul had wanted to go and visit the Romans, but he had been kept from that. He wanted to see their ministry. He wanted to encourage them. Uh, much like he wants to encourage us. Most people believe that Paul wrote the book of Romans while he was staying in Corinth, uh, doing his ministry in Corinth to the Corinthian church, to which we have two letters from Paul. And he writes to them saying, I want to come visit you, but I have to first go to Jerusalem for another mission that I'm on. Now the Holy Spirit uh, revealed to Paul that there was trouble waiting for him in Jerusalem, so much so that people around Paul encouraged Paul not to go to Jerusalem, for they feared uh, his death and his arrest. But Paul showed his confidence in God and said, if God wants me to be arrested, then that's okay with me. Um, I want the kingdom to advance. So Paul goes to Jerusalem, and just as suspected, Paul is arrested in Jerusalem, which leads to a lengthy number of trials and court appearances, and all these different series of events, eventually leading Paul to make his appeal to Caesar in Rome. And Paul is shipped off to Rome. There's a shipwreck and all kinds of things that happen. And eventually, Paul does end up in Rome, not though as what he wants to be, a visitor, but as a prisoner. But God still uses Paul in an incredible way and makes us think, sometimes God doesn't always answer our prayers the way we see them. God often doesn't use our life the way we, we think that it should be used, much like he used the life of Paul here. And so as we get into the chapter, into the text here, one of the things we see in chapter 1, at least the first half of chapter 1, is that Paul is really, really proud of his, his faith. He's proud of a couple of different things. One, he's proud of the church in general. Paul writes to the church here in Rome, and in verse 8, Paul says this. He says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. So Paul was excited about the church. He had heard about the great things in Rome, about their great reputation, about their hope um, that they were given to the Roman civilization in the face of adversity because Rome was a hotbed of persecution in the first century. Yet the church thrived, and Paul celebrated that. It makes me think, what do we celebrate in our life? Are we like Paul? Are we proud of the church? Do we celebrate the church? Do we brag on the church today? Do you tell your friends and your co-workers the ministries and the things that God is doing through the church today? Paul also was proud of the gospel as well. Verse 16, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. 
when others would cower in the face of persecution, Paul says, no, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, even if it costs me my life. He knew the gospel could accomplish great things. And so therefore, he, he wanted to set people free. He wanted to see the gospel save people, even if it cost him. And I wonder, are we proud of the gospel? Are we proud of the good news of Jesus Christ? So Paul, in this chapter 1, concludes this chapter with a pretty lengthy discourse on the dangers of what sin leads to. I would encourage you to read verses 18 through 32 and really digest that. And three things we want you to do there. One, as you read that, pray that people who have given in to the slippery slope of sin would recognize the hope of Jesus. Two, we pray that you would do a thorough examination of your life to see if there's any sin habits that need to be addressed. Third, we would encourage you to consider areas in your life where it is tempting to exchange the truth of God for a lie. We pray that this video uh, discussion has taken you deeper and you'll grow from this knowledge that you have of Jesus Christ. God bless. We'll see you next time.